this idea of people not knowing who's getting the actual medication and who's getting a fake medication is called blinding. So blinding is any individual associated with an experiment who is not aware of how subjects have been allocated or assigned to treatment groups. So there are two main groups of individuals who could affect the outcome of an experiment. That first one is the subjects, uh, the treatment administrators or the technicians. So if you as a participant know whether you're getting the placebo or the treatment, um, it could be that the treatment administrators it's, um, could maybe give that away as they're handing out the medication. So you think a lot about um, when I used to teach middle school, they would have us read those standardized tests. And so you were supposed to read a story and then read the question and then the four multiple choice answers to, to test students' abilities to take verbal and translate it into written. And I found it was really hard to read the four choices in the same tone of voice, because as soon as I got to the right answer, my voice would have a little uplift to it. Or if the answer was just completely ridiculous, I would read it in this tone of voice that was like, are you seriously kidding me? That's a terrible answer. We know that's not right. So it's very hard for me to read those all even and not give away the answer. And so if you are the treatment administrator handing out the medication, you also don't want to know because you don't want to subconsciously give away that information of whether you're giving a treatment or a placebo. So that's one group. The other group is the group who evaluates the results. So these could be the judges, the treating physicians, et cetera. So anytime you use placebos, that automatically means that your subjects are blind. So you are what's called at least single blind. So when every individual in one of those classes is blinded, so either all the participants and technicians or the judges and evaluators, um, then we're going to get single blind. If you are able to get both groups to not know, then we're gonna call that double blind. And where that double blind might be really important is things that are maybe a little more subjective. So if I was testing whether an iron supplement caused people's iron levels in their blood to increase, well, that's a blood test, it's pretty objective. You run the test, the machine spits out a number, right? And so it might not be important to go through and make sure nobody at all knows what's going on. Uh, but if this was something like I was rating how white people's teeth are, well, that's a little bit more subjective. And so in that case, I'd want to make sure that nobody knows whether they're getting the actual treatment or the placebo. Right. And so um, that double blinding does get to be really expensive. And so you want to make sure that if you're using it, it's because you really need it. And it's really going to add to the quality of your results. Whereas sometimes when those results are more objective, you can get away with single blind. So how would you do a double blind? That's always a great question people ask. And the answer to that is that you hire an outside company. So if I was testing these different um, levels of ibuprofen, an outside company would have identical pills that were sugar pills that were the 200, the 400, and the 800 milligrams. And what they would do is they'd take little treatment cups and they'd write people's name on it and they'd put the correct pill in there. And so they have a master list that says, you know, Cindy's getting the 200, Fred is getting the 800, and so on. And when I show up to work as the researcher, they hand me the tray and I go up. Oh, this one says, Cindy, here you go. This one says, Fred, here you go. This one says, Jamal, here you go. And so I would just hand them out and I would have no idea. You would have no idea. The pills all look the same. And once we've done all the research, we've gotten all the results, the judges and evaluators have given their assessment, then that third party will come out and say, okay, so these are the people that got the sugar pill. These are the people that got the 200. And then we can start to line up those results. And so that's where kind of that expense comes from in that double blind. You do have to hire this third party to kind of help administrate that stuff. So that sums up the control part of the experimental design.